16. Would you pray with me? Lord, I just thank you for this time we have to worship you and be in your word together. Lord, I ask that you would (coughs) guide us today as we approach sermon time in some different ways. Would you open us now to hearing what you have to say, and Lord, that there would be oh so much more of you, and oh so much less of me. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Well, I'm still asking for cute videos from cute people doing the updated church rhyme. Now, I already had two from the Boney family, but we had one from the Boney family already, so I'm waiting for some other people uh, to send me some videos, and until I get it, we'll just do it corporately, and you can express all of your cuteness just to me right now. So I would have you assume the position with your hands. Uh, you can try this. It's, it's good for you. It helps stretch out the knuckles. You just put your fingers like this, and it's the old church rhyme, remember? Only we're turning it kind of inside out, because we go, this is the church. See all the people? This is just a building with a steeple. Thank you. I welcome you back to our third message in our series on the vision of SMC. That vision being SMC wants you to be S-A-V-E-D or saved. Now, in our first message, I challenged you to tweak our original vision, SMC, the place to be saved, to SMC wants you to be saved, changing our vision from a place focus to more of a people focus. Now, last week we began to unpack the word saved, S-A-V-E-D, one letter at a time, and we started with the letter S for salvation or saved. We learned about what we are being saved from and what we are being saved for. Now, the the rest of the vision hasn't changed, and so we're going to unpack the second letter, which is A, which stands for what? Do you remember? Adventure. adventure. Well, what is an adventure? We may wonder, what, what is an adventure anyway? Well, people a lot of times think of, well, skydiving or whitewater rafting or traveling to a different country like our youth group will do, going to distant, far-off places. We think of those as adventures. Well, the point I would have you ponder today is a different uh, definition of adventure, but it's one I'd like to work with. It's on your outline. The point to ponder under get your feet wet, you are on an adventure whenever God calls you out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. You are on an adventure whenever God calls you out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. And I believe he is calling you to an adventure today. Now, we're going we're gonna to get into it a little bit. Some of you are already on adventure. Uh, some of you are on the verge of adventure. Some of you are tired of being on adventure. But some of you are not. Okay, so we're, we're going to try and meet you wherever you are today. Now, how do you know if you're on an adventure? It's all about voluntary discomfort, with the immediate result being that rush of adrenaline that you get when you, when you do something dangerous or uncomfortable. You go, ooh, this, this doesn't feel nice. This doesn't feel comfortable. And suddenly you're a little more alert. And it's in that environment that we tend to have deeper learning happen. This is why adventures are important. Let me give you the next fill-ins. This is the primary reason I believe adventures are important. God often speaks most clearly And we listen most intently when we are on adventures. God often speaks most clearly, and we listen most intently when we are on adventures. And so I'm going to challenge you to consider, what has God said to you on adventures? Maybe you'll want to tell somebody. Now, when we are out of our comfort zones, our our senses are heightened. Our awareness is elevated, and our minds tend to clear, and we're able to focus better. This is when God speaks to us with amazing clarity. 
At the same time, it's also when we tend to listen most intently or even intensely. I remember whitewater rafting the first time. And we were in that big rubber, rubber raft and the guide was droning on instructions. And as we drifted down the river, no one was really paying any attention until the river started to move faster. And we could hear the roar of the rapids up ahead of us and we could see the churning white water. Then all of a sudden, people grabbed a hold of their paddles. They jammed their foot down into the crease in the rubber raft and locked their foot in. And then you started listening real intently to your leader, to your guide, who was yelling, start paddling, start paddling. We were feeling uncomfortable. We were feeling a little bit of danger. And so we were on an adventure. Now, if you've been around SMC for a while, you know that I don't particularly like water. It makes me feel very uneasy. So when I was offered the chance to go whitewater rafting, I went. Even though at that time I could not swim, I had learned that God uses adventures to teach me certain things in unexpected ways. This pattern has been repeated many times. Riding a bicycle 100 miles in a day with some of you or riding a camel on the Mount of Olives in Israel with some of you. When I'm out of my comfort zone, God often speaks to me very loudly and very clearly. Again, look at that application. What has God said to you on an adventure? What learning have you already had? Would you share it with someone? Maybe this week? Could you consider what you've already learned? Now, one of the great adventure stories of the Bible involves something a lot like whitewater rafting, only there was no raft. Here's how the story goes. Jesus was preaching late one night. And so, when he was done preaching, he dismissed the crowd. Go in my peace and have a great week. And then he turned to his disciples and said, Okay, you guys, get in the boat, go over to the other side of the lake. They got in the boat, the crowd dispersed, and Jesus went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the disciples took off across the lake, and they were being buffeted by the wind and the waves. They were having a hard time making headway. But then around 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came out walking on the water. Well, the disciples in the boat suddenly saw him and said, it's a ghost! And they were terrified. Well, Jesus said, I'm sorry, first, Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, come, can I come out to the water? And Jesus said, Peter, Come on. So Peter started walking on the water towards Jesus. But then he looked and he saw the waves and he heard the wind and he started sinking. And Jesus came over and said, Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? You have little faith. And he, and he grabbed him immediately and they both got into the boat. At that point, Everyone in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you are definitely the Son of God. Now, that was my own little adventure. I just want you to know, uh, oral Bible storytelling is something I saw Sam do, and I thought it was really cool. And God said, you know, maybe you should try that. And I said, God, that would make me very uncomfortable. Ding! It's adventure sermon time. And so there it was. Sam did give me a crash course this week, so I wasn't completely ignorant. And again, I felt God wanted me to try it. Some of the words on my sermon survey recently were predictable. And so I'm trying to give you a little unpredictability. Now, that story did come from Matthew 14, verse 22, and that's where I'd have you open your Bibles to right now. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, is where it begins. 
And so if you want to go there and look at the story, that's okay. But what I'd rather have you do right now is reflect on the story that you just saw. And I'd like for you to consider responding to some of these questions. And these are the same questions that Sam did with us, and Sam is there with the microphone. What part of the story did you like or did you not like? What part of the story did you like or did you not like? Now you talk for Sam. <laughs> and so I got him right there. So I, I, go ahead, Mar. What part did you like or not like? Um, I didn't like the part that Peter like doubted that he couldn't walk on water because, I don't know, because normal people don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody wants to see somebody sink, do they? But he did. Made you feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah, made me too. Others, what you liked or didn't like about the story. I like the part where, like, Peter just got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, that's interesting. We, we tend to focus on him sinking. But friends, he walked. If you look at the text, he walked just like Jesus. And it doesn't say how long he was walking on the water. Awesome, awesome. What else did you like or not like? We've had a, a not like and a like. Anything else? There you go, way in the back. Or? I actually like that he did doubt that he was there with Jesus because I doubt and I just have his word to go by and so I don't feel so odd that all the times I doubt, even though I read over and over and over or live through things that I... I know not to doubt, but I still do. Yeah. So, so actually, the doubting, you liked that part. Even though Jesus was standing right there, they still had doubts. Awesome observation. Anybody else? Jerome is right there. You go ahead, brother. I like the story because it shows that with Jesus, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yep. Walking on water is one of those things. Nobody else has done it except Jesus and Peter that I'm aware of. Anything is possible. All right, I'll still take some things that you like or didn't like, but we're going to transition into what did you learn? What did you learn from that story? Or, or perhaps what do you think God is trying to teach us Okay, I'm going to keep it corporately, so you're not being too vulnerable. What do you think God is trying to teach us through this story? What do you think? <clears throat> In the balcony, you can say something, you just don't have to shout. But it's all right. What do you think? I saw two hands. <clears throat> that when we doubt... Um, Jesus is there, and he sees us doubt, and then, but he still loves us, but when we doubt, we get further away from him, but when we ask forgiveness, um, we kind of st stand or walk on water with him and be with him, uh -huh. and not doubt and sink like Peter did. Uh -huh. That's an interesting observation, I don't know. Did he walk back to the boat, or did Jesus carry him back to the boat? Maybe he got up and walked a little bit more. Go ahead. Um, I think he's probably trying to teach us that no matter where we are, he'll be. Because Amen. no matter where we are, he can come to us at any time, any day, any hour. Nothing prevents him from getting to us but us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wonderful. Other things you think... He may be wanting us to learn from this story. That we should try not to doubt, but even if we do, then God will still be there to help us. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Got another one right there. Even when there are times we are uncertain, we need to put our faith and trust in, in Jesus because 
he really does care about us and he will protect us even from things we don't always know or understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more. <clears throat> He's there for us in the storms of life. Would the story look different if it had been a calm sea? All right, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna turn it a little more personal, a little more vulnerable. And I'm just gonna ask if there if there's anybody that would perhaps want to testify on what they learned from this story. Something needs to change in your life personally. I know that's, that's raising the ante considerably. But would there be someone here that you heard something in that story, or maybe in the interpretation of that story, that you now believe, you know, I, I need to change this in my life because of the story that I just saw and heard. Okay, this is, this is taking it up a notch. <clears throat> but is there anyone who would have a personal, personal testimony in that regard? <laughs> Sam, raising his own hand. Fair enough. Uh, I got you. Uh, for me, I know that sometimes God nudges me to do something, and it's uncomfortable or whatever, and a lot of times I say, oh, I don't know, or I put it off, and I put it off, so... I need to be a little more intentional about sometimes uh, doing stuff that seems crazy or might seem, I don't know, it might be a little scary, but uh, where I feel God nudging me to do that, I should be trying that out. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam. Jerome was back up. My neighbor one day asked me, do I want to go and visit her mom at, um, I think it was um, S Smithville Manor. I had never been there before, and I thought that her mom might have had a, a house or something or that she just wants to go out there and visit her mom and so forth. So I said, no, not this week here. This is this story I'm telling you has been a while. So. Uh, I told her that week no, but the next week came around, she asked me again, and so I said yeah. Very uncomfortable for me, I've had my own thing I wanted to do, uh, so I figured like for me to take time to go and visit her with her mom, it was taking me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I've thought about it a minute, as she walked away, she kind of, I seen the look on her face as if like she was really disappointed and she kind of hoped that I would go along with her, you know, and so before she pulled off, I said, hold on a minute, give me a minute, I mean, go and put on some shoes, bless you. So, so I stopped her and I went along with her, you know, and so when I would, did go there, her mom, I think about 96 or 86, more under two, she's at a nursery home. I thought I was going to her house, but I found out it was a nursery home that I was going to. So when I went there and she introduced me to her mom and everything and I said hi and so forth. And we were sitting there and they was playing this game called chicken. It's a pack of dominoes, but it's a different game how they play with it. Mm -hmm. So I sat there patiently and watched them play back and forth, back and forth. And I'm saying to myself, there's a lot of other things I can be doing right now. And I can be here and there. I can be here, I can do this and do that. But at the same time, when I was just thinking about me, what I could be doing, you know, I felt like I was out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So as the day go by, there was this lady there who uh, was just asking for the time. She couldn't see she was a blind lady. And uh, she kept asking and kept asking, and so I gave her the time. And when she wanted to drink a water, the employees there, but they didn't quite hear her, and so I got up out of my chair and told her, hey, this lady will let have a drink of water. And so as time went by, you know, and then it was time to go. That next Sunday came along, and as the week went by, you know, I kind of thought about it. I said, you know, that wasn't so bad after all. You know, I mm -hmm. need to get more out of my comfort zone, be more concerned about other people, see how other people live in their life. How can I be a help to them? 
Mm -hmm. So that next week before it came by, I came and knocked on my neighbor, neighbor's door and I asked her, I said, what time are we leaving? Good job, Jerome. And so I look forward to being there. I intend to go there today so I can give the lady the time that she might need or whatever it may be. Amen. And so, yes, it does work the way you say, getting out of our comfort zone. Just to Good. Well, power. thank you, Jerome. Getting out of the comfort zone. And so this just reaffirmed what you had already done. All right. Well, I'm going I'm to tie it off right there, and we're going to move forward. Thank you for the sharing and the learning that happened. I believe strongly that Jesus still calls us out of our comfort zones and into the unknown. And that's why adventure is the second element of our, vi our vision. Uh, shortly after the vision was launched, I had a pastor friend ask me about the vision of our church. And I remember telling him uh, about the S-A-V-E-D thing, and I got to the A, and he said, huh, well, the, the, the vision sounded pretty good, but the A part, that adventure thing, that's just dumb. And I said, oh, thanks for the affirmation. Um, I said, because he was a preacher, I said, now, I would like for you just to think a little bit about all the times God calls people into adventure in the Bible. You see, if you look at the times in the Bible God pe called people on adventure, you would be hard-pressed to find a time that he wasn't calling people out on adventure. Adam and Eve getting out of the garden. Moses at the burning bush. Gideon at the threshing floor. Esther at the door of the king. Noah in the ark. Mary listening to the angel. The rich young ruler being told, go give away all your riches. Even, gar even Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Your next fill-in begins with the challenge I want to give you today because I believe God has another adventure waiting for you. On your outline, God has another adventure waiting for you. That's on your mind and now perhaps is in your heart. Just, just look, at your, look at your life a little bit. Think about your life right now. What is that adventure? I hope you fill it in. Again, for some of you, this won't require much thought or energy, but for some of you, it will. I'd like to encourage folks uh, who this may be easy for. Uh, those are three groups, and then there's a fourth group that I'm going to talk to last. Because I see, I see all of these groups active here at SMC first. I've talked to a few of you that by choice, you have put yourself so far out of your comfort zone, you don't even remember what your comfort zone really was anymore. You are going, okay, God, I think I'm done learning now. I've had enough adventure. I'm, I'm all out of adrenaline, Lord. Help me out. If I can encourage you, keep holding on tight to God and his word. Hold on tight to your believing friends and family, looking and listening and learning for what God has for you. Now that's one group. The next group are the ones that are right on the cusp of a great adventure. Maybe you're getting ready to be married, or maybe you're just married. Maybe you're getting ready to be parents, or you're just starting parenting. Maybe you've just had a job change. You name it. We have people on the verge of jumping out of their comfort zone. I want to tell you this, jump. Take the chance. Do the adventure. The journey Jesus calls us to is worth it. In fact, it will be the difference between living for all God has for you and stopping short. So I would simply say to you this, prayerfully prepare and then jump. Now, another bunch of you here at SMC are adventurers, and I just want to encourage you because you are some of the most courageous ones I know. There's a number of you who are on involuntary adventures. Sickness, death of a loved one, financial crisis, 
or pain has pitched you way out of your comfort zone. You read about Job, and you wonder if God is doing a sequel to that book and your name is going to be in the title. Can I just encourage you? Hang in there. Lying in that hospital bed, wishing you were anywhere else, makes you seriously wonder if this adventure is out of even God's control. Can I encourage you today? Know that it is in God's control. Never forget you are in a battle. And the devil wants to see you fall just like he wanted to see Job fall. But you don't need to. Because greater is he than it, that is in us than he that is in the world. Keep fighting till the finish. Your prize will be very well earned. Now the last group, the fourth group. Now those other three groups uh, can fill in that last blank. That last blank is all you, by the way. God has another adventure waiting for you. What is it? Maybe you're sitting here today and you really have absolutely no idea. We have some folks uh, who are there. Folks who are bored, wondering where's the excitement, the engagement, and the passion that I once had for life and for God. Why am I bored with God, may I suggest? If you find yourself in this position, it's very possible that you are either not a Christian or you have not opened yourself up completely to following God's will for your life. I would ask you right now, Honestly and humbly ask, God, how are you calling me out of my comfort zone? What is the next adventure that you would have me to go on? Then I would invite you to go to a godly friend and ask them the exact same thing. Hey, what do you think, where do you think God is calling me out of my comfort zone? Where do you think God is calling me to go on an adventure. Friends, I believe God has an adventure for you. It may be around the corner of your neighborhood, or it may be around the other side of the globe, but adventure is waiting for you. Perhaps even today, let us pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you that you have called us together on adventure. And Lord, I just pray that you would help all of those who today are struggling uh, with the overwhelming nature of the adventure that you've called them on. Lord, give them more courage, give them more strength, give them more patience. And Lord, for those who are sitting here uncertain of the adventure, Lord, I pray that you would speak to them. Lord, through your word and the story that was heard, through your spirit that's moving even now in people's minds and hearts, and also through the people all around us, Lord, that we could know your will and follow it to our next great adventure. We ask this all in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen.